with these guys. I'm talking about the killer Nile crocodile, three of them captured near Miami. Now, and Jeff Harris, this species of anacondas can grow up to 30 feet long and are breeding in the Fakahatchee Strand Preserve, just east of Naples. Python got a passport, came over here with the chameleons. <laughs> Uh, and you know they, who, and the, the, the small community of king cobra that's still in Florida that no one can find. Very, very gentle yoink because this guy is super rare and super special. One of the rarest non-native species of snake you can find here in South Florida. So, Florida has a bit of an invasive reptile problem, and I, as your local Florida man and animal adventurer, am here to talk about it and some of these more recent reptile allegations. If you did not know, Florida is the invasive species capital of the world. We have everything from stray cats to cane toads and lionfish, and don't even get me started on the reptiles. Of course, you all know about the tegu, the giant pythons, and this thing. Yeah, Florida's a bit of a mess right now, and with over 65 different invasive reptiles in the state, a lot of people are wondering what's next, and I compiled three very interesting cases about some future pretty significant invasive reptile species. As of now, nobody could confirm if any of these species are established, but there is some very interesting evidence that goes towards and against each and every one of these cases, starting off with... So first we need to get two things out of the way. There's actually not been one, but two different species of anaconda reported in South Florida. The yellow anaconda and the green anaconda. Mostly the green anaconda has been the one accused of becoming established in the Everglades, even though they have a similar number of reports. While juveniles and adults have been found in the Everglades and other parts of Florida, overall their ranges for both species seem to be pretty scattered, but there are two very important things we need to talk about. The first one being this alleged colony of anacondas out in Fakahatchee Strand State Park. This is a particularly remote part of the Everglades, which very few people travel to. The fact that green anacondas and yellow anacondas are both highly aquatic makes a much harder spot than the Burmese pythons. But in spite of this, there's still only been a few reports, most of which taking place in the early 2000s. So why are so many people talking about it now? Well, despite there only being a few reports of each species being found in the Fakahatchee Strand, FWC's been deciding to go through some pretty extreme measures to make sure these animals don't become established. Last year, FWC passed a new law making it illegal for pretty much anyone to own any large constrictors in the state of Florida, unless of course you have them grandfathered in, but even then they have to follow some pretty extreme caging requirements, which is very understandable. But at the same time, this has led to a variety of problems. This arc, this video shows officers with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission accidentally killing a pet boa constrictor that was pregnant with up to $100,000 worth of other snakes. Yeah, this level of incompetency and corruption has gotten a lot of people wondering if FWC has purposely been spreading the rumor about green anacondas and yellow anacondas breeding in the Everglades in order to make this ban more justifiable to the public. If this is true or not, I cannot say. Even though FWC has the goal of protecting native wildlife, so far they've done a pretty questionable job to say the least. It is interesting to note though that both species of anaconda have been found in the Fakahatchee Strand at similar times but it's hard to say if this is a purposeful release or just coincidence. While the odds of there being a current invasive population in the Fakahatchee Strand or any other part of Florida is incredibly low, there is one important thing that we haven't talked about yet, that being that anacondas are capable of parthenogenesis, which is a form of asexual reproduction. This means it only takes one individual to start the problem, and with multiple different individuals already being found in the Fakahatchee Strand, in addition to other parts of Florida, it's only a matter of time before some problems start to arise from these anaconda species. I mean, technically we already do have an established population of anacondas in Florida, but not the kind of anacondas you'd expect. As of 2022, we've finally figured out that there is an established population of rainbow boas, an incredibly close relative to the green and yellow anacondas, reproducing down in Homestead. At first, I didn't actually believe this, but after talking to some people personally who've actually found baby rainbow boas, in addition to adults down in Homestead, I finally believe them. Just like the anacondas, rainbow boas have a very similar lifestyle, spending most of their time in the water and eating a variety of different fish and rodents. 
but in turn, they're much smaller than either species of anaconda. So they're a good bit hard to spot and people are still finding them in decent numbers. So why aren't people finding anacondas in the same numbers? Maybe it's because there isn't a population or maybe it's because they're in a more remote area. I don't know, but it's very interesting to think about. Regardless though, if anacondas were to become established in Florida, it would be truly devastating. We already have the very widespread Burmese python, but we also have other invasive giant snakes such as the common boa, and as I stated before, the African rock python. Even though these species are less widespread, they also have their own significant impacts on the ecosystem. Despite anacondas being a pretty dangerous snake, as the green anaconda is literally the largest snake in the world, and while reports of them eating people are questionable to say the least, they have been reported. But the next invasive species that we're talking about definitely does eat people. Pretty often, in fact. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in addition to a lot of misinformation about this potential future invader. If you did not know, the Nile crocodile could get up to 20 feet long and is a well-known man-eater. But rumors such as these... But then there was another guy that I was watching this documentary last night, or this YouTube video rather last night, where he was saying that there's like huge crocodiles that take out cattle on the west side of Florida. But they've interbred with our crocs. And we're starting to find 19 and 20 foot long crocs on the west coast that are eating cattle. Yes, Nile crocodiles have been found in Florida, but first, I gotta say it. The whole rumor about Nile crocodiles spreading to the west coast and eating cattle, that's a bunch of bullshit. Don't get me wrong, this could potentially be a problem in the future as Nile crocodiles could get pretty big. But right now, that is not a point of concern. What is a concern though is the fact that four juvenile Nile crocodiles have been found surviving down in Homestead. One of which actually had to be released and re-caught two years later, which proves that they could definitely survive out in the Everglades, and most likely other parts of Florida as well. What is very interesting to note though, is that all four of the individuals caught out in the Everglades, well, Homestead rather, were actually all related, meaning that they likely came from the same parents, and therefore the same source. Does that mean there's a super mama croc hiding out in homestead among the other species of crocodilian reproducing? Yeah, that is highly unlikely, but it does remain unanswered to where these four Nile crocodiles did come from. What most likely occurred is that these were either zoo or private collection escapes that escaped while they were really young and ended up growing up in the wild. But what about all these other claims of people seeing unusual looking crocodiles out in the Everglades? This is most likely a case of mistaken identity, either for the American crocodile or another invasive species, the spectacled caiman. Yeah, not just Florida, but Homestead alone has three species of crocodilian, the native American alligator and American crocodile, in addition to the invasive spectacled caiman, which nobody talks about for some reason. If the Nile crocodile was to become established, it would put all three of these species at risk. While Nile crocodiles live in freshwater, which is pretty different than the American crocodile, they could still interbreed, leading to hybrid offspring, which would screw up their gene pool. The Nile crocodile would also compete with the native American alligator for food. These crocs also have the chance of putting humans at risk, as they do eat about a thousand people each year in their native range, which is not pleasant to say the least. But considering the fact that it's been nearly eight years since the Nile crocodile has actually been found in the wild of South Florida, it is highly unlikely that these guys are actually breeding out there but it's not impossible. These crocodilians could go undetected really easily. After all, a couple years back, there was actually a Morlet's crocodile found relatively close to my house that was apparently living there for years on end, and nobody reported it. At least not until its date of capture, that is. And it just goes to show that really anything could be out there and anything could happen. So, are there Nile crocodiles out in Florida? Well, it's highly unlikely, but considering how fast and how far they could travel, especially considering the fact that these four individuals were able to scatter pretty far, it's not impossible that there could be at least a few more Nile crocodiles out there. But you know what else is possible and would be really cool is if you press that like and subscribe button to help my insecure ego. But don't worry, the coolest thing of all is definitely this next animal, though it's also probably the weirdest case of them all. <laughs> Before you click off making the same assumption I did that this was just some stupid rumor being passed around, there's actually a lot of uh, questionable evidence for this to say the least. 
I've even had reputable people myself DM me telling me about this whole King Cobra secret population in Everglades thing. Yet so far I haven't been given a single location or a photo of where these King Cobras are at. So I'd say this is probably the most unlikely of the three animals to become established, but also the most interesting and scary. We know though, King Cobras could survive out in the Everglades simply because one of them actually escaped not once, but twice up in Orlando and was able to survive out in the wild just fine. South Florida would be even easier for a King Cobra to survive in as the climate's much more similar to their natural habitat and they also have their number one food source there, the also invasive Burmese python. Yes, these Cobras could get up to 19 feet long and eat Burmese pythons, though I should also correct myself, these are not true cobras, but do belong to the family Elapidae, which with the exception of the coral snake is pretty much exclusive to the Eastern Hemisphere. So in spite of multiple credible sources, including python hunters and FWC themselves claiming that they found king cobras out in the Everglades and possibly other parts of Florida as well, so far there is no physical proof, and that is why I highly doubt these guys are really out in the Everglades as there's just not enough evidence to really say one way or the other. But it doesn't end there. Back in 2009, there was a report of another invasive, or should I say, non-native elapid that was actually reported biting someone down in South Florida. This was none other than a wild green mamba roaming around in Miami inside of someone's house where it bit someone and escaped to never be seen again. And so far, we have no idea where the snake came from or where it went. And yes, if you are wondering, the guy did survive. But the fact remains that if invasive venomous reptiles like this could be out there, maybe there's king cobras too. It's really just a matter of finding out in the future, as right now there's just not enough information to know. But with reports of new invasive species popping up left and right, it's only a matter of time before some of these cool critters start showing up in our own backyards. Thankfully though, as of now, all three of these species seem pretty unlikely to be showing up anytime soon. But what I hope you do take away from this video is that it doesn't matter if it's a green iguana or a freaking king cobra. The native animals in the native environment of Florida should always come first, but at the same time, these are just animals. They're all incredible in their own right, they all have their own conscience, and it's not their fault that they're here, it's ours. So we gotta learn to protect our environment better so we don't have to find out ways to eventually get rid of these new invasive animals in the future. Now hopefully this video does well so I can make a part two.